Hello guys, good evening. Hello, hello, good evening guys. Miguel, Julio, Alex, Heidi. Hello, can you guys listen to me? Hello. Hello. Hello, teacher. Hello. Hey, how hello, are teacher. you? Are you guys ready for today's session? Okay, teacher. Nice. Nice to hear that. Okay, so welcome. It's so nice to um, be connected and we can start our first session. I can see just a few of you with the camera open. Alex, Julio, and also Blanca is there. So welcome. Uh, we're going to start at our class. So how was your day? How was it? Nice, busy, tiring. How was it? Blanca? Day. Really, I really tired because this day is feel like Monday. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, since we rested yesterday, it seems like today is, is Monday again, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, makes sense. So thanks so much for sharing. What about your day, Julio? How was your day? Miguel is there, Alex is there. So welcome guys, thank you so much for turning on your cameras. That is so important, okay? So we're gonna start today's session. If you would like to share with me how your day was, it'll be great, okay? Maybe anybody else would like to share how you know your day was, anything that you want to share so we can start you know, getting ready with, with today's session. Let's see, uh, well, this is our first class and there are many things that I want to go over today. So I can see we are 13 already connected so I, I that's cool. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Nice. Awesome. That's great. Okay and can you guys listen to my audio um, clearly or do you have any problems listening to me? It's really good. I listen. Okay. It's really Awesome, that's nice to hear. Well, welcome guys. Uh, it's such a privilege to be connected so we can uh, all learn on this uh, course. This is Intermediate 3. So that tells me that you guys speak English already, which is really cool. And well, uh, today we're gonna have our class number one. And I want to start today because I don't know anything about you and I want to know you know, my uh, class, and that's something that I love doing every time I start a class. So I would like to listen to you, okay? I can see we are, at this moment, we are 15 connected. So what about if we take some time, maybe, um, maybe 20 seconds or more, uh, to go ahead and I can hear some background, okay? So what about if we take some time, some minutes, you know, to introduce ourselves, okay? I can see we are, wow, like 16 connected already. That's really nice. And I would like to give you some time for you to start uh, talking with me and with the class. So who would like to start? This is what we need to do. We need to uh, make sure we uh, follow these guidelines. We need to first greet, Good evening, and then you briefly introduce yourself. Say whatever you, you want to share with the class. And also, I want you to say what your favorite name is and how do you like people you know, to call you. And if you have any expectations about this course, it'll be great if you can socialize it, okay? So let's take some time. Who wants to start? Breaking the ice, I think. So let's see who is the first brave enough to do it. You can raise your hand. Hmm, I don't see anybody. Julio, okay, Julio, go ahead, please. Thank you so much for you know being the first one. Okay, hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Julio Cruz. 
I am 45 years old. Uh, I am, uh, I work for Roof of the Loom, El Salvador, uh, right now. Uh, I live in, in, in Las Arboledas, in Lourdes, de Colón, La Libertad. And uh, I have a, a daughter. Uh, he has eight years old. And I like to people call me Julio. Julio, it's okay for me, no problem with that. And the expectation about this course is to learn more about uh, grammar and improve my speech and vocabulary. Nice. Thank you so much for sharing, Julio. And I'm, I'm glad to hear you know, about your expectations. And of course, this program also has, you know, some parts like grammar scenarios for you to improve it and also speak it, okay? That's so nice to hear, okay? Uh, so Julio, since you were the first one who volunteered, can you please suggest, oh, we have Gerardo. Okay, Gerardo, <laughs> thank you so hello. much, go ahead. Okay, uh, hello to everybody. Uh, my name is, Gerardo Rivera, and yeah. I architect. I have been in English class for about uh, one year, and I'm very happy to start a new course. My expectation for this course is to learn more uh, uh, grammatic and speech very well. Of course, you will do it. I'm glad to hear you have been learning English for a year. So that's so nice. And of course, you're going to learn a lot because this is uh, this program is designed for you to practice online a lot. So when we, when we meet here, make sure to ask questions, okay? That's gonna help us. So we'll listen to Blanca now. Go ahead, Blanca. Good night, everyone. Hey, my name is Blanca Molina, but I really like to say me Blanqui or Blanquita. I don't like Blanca. <laughs> And um, I work in call center, in one link. And I, my expectation for the course, uh, I really uh, better for my pronunciation, grammar, and practice. And, and that's it. Cool, thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. So Blanky, we're gonna call you Blanky then, okay? And thank, thank you. you so much for sharing about your work experience. You work, you work in call center, that's cool. Let's see, we have Alex. Thank you, Alex. Um, good evening class with the teacher. My name is Humberto Alexander Haku. Um, like me, uh, use my, my, first, my second name, Alex. Um, I work in, in I work I work at in Confecciones del Valle. Um, uh, my my favorite my my say your favorite name. Okay, my favorite name is Alex. Um, I I am a engineer quality department. Um, my expectation is a uh, and better my pronunciation and grammar. Only that. Nice. Thank you so much. So you are an engineer. Great. You my you must be the person who is like uh, making sure everything like goes well in the quality, right? Making sure everything is all right. So that's great to hear. So thank you so much, Alex. Yeah, we're gonna practice a lot a lot of pronunciation and also grammar on this course. So thank you so much for, for saying that. We're going to listen to, we have Claudia and we have Bea with the hands up. So we're going to start with Claudia. Good night, everybody. Uh, my name is Claudia de Enriquez. Uh, I am business administration. I work in a hospital. I am married and I have uh, two sons. Uh, one of them is 
17 years old and the other one is uh, 25 years old. And my favorite name is Claudia. And my expectation about this course is improve my, my, my knowledge and my pronunciation. Definitely, you will improve your knowledge. Okay, that's great. So thank you so much for sharing something about you, Claudia. And we listen to now, we listen to Bea. Go ahead, Bea. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Beatriz Duran. I am 30 years old. I work in Place Mar El Salvador. I study English because I, I need to improve my pronunciation and my vocabulary. Uh, because my boss is uh, North American, North American, American, and American, American and, and he he don't um, speak Spanish, and it's very difficult for me the communication. Nice. So you have you have a lot of let's say uh, opportunities to practice at work, which is really nice. Yeah. So. Even though it might be a challenge for you at this moment, but that is a great opportunity for you to improve your you know, vocabulary and also your uh, experience there. So it's great, okay? So let's listen to uh, this time, I think, Carlos. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Carlos Antonio Polanco. I called to call me Carlos, my expectation is to learn grammar and speak better. Thank you. Ah, well, I am 53 years old. Okay, so thank you so much for sharing. Of course, like I said at the beginning, we're gonna practice some grammar and you know, that's the, that's the purpose of this. And thank you so much for sharing about you, Carlos, okay? Is there anybody else who, who hasn't introduced yet? Me too, oh. All right, thank you so much. We listen to uh, Heidi, yes. Okay, uh, good evening. Um, my name is Heidi Enriquez. Uh, I'm Heidi. Uh, I like, I work in the Fruto de Lu. Um, in expected, expected about this course is um, equals my partner is grammar and vocabulary. Okay, okay, of course. Thank you so much for sharing and also uh, telling us what your expectations are. So we're gonna listen to, let's see, Miguel, I think is missing. Yes, go ahead, please. Hey. Hi, everybody. We got, sorry, we got two Miguels, I think. Miguel Lara and Miguel Ramirez, right? Oh, sorry. So let's see, uh, who's smiling? Let me see. Both are smiling, so that's really difficult for me to choose. So I don't know who. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, let's start with you, Miguel Ramirez. You start, please. Okay. Good evening, class. Good evening, teacher. Um, everybody. Uh, my first name is Mike Miguel, and my last name is Ramirez. <laughs> I have 40 years old. Uh, I live in Quisaltepeque in the Department of the La Libertad. My I work is operative manager at uh, Spark Parts and uh, Warehouse in a company uh, Textufil in the municipality of Soyapango. Uh, expectative is I uh, learn a lot of my classmates and my teacher and, and my vocabulary and pronunciation, uh, a little grammatic <laughs> is uh, so, so is expectative in my class. Nice. Yeah, many expectations, okay? That's really cool. So thank you so much, uh, Mike. So let's listen to Miguel Lara now. Miguel? Hello, everybody. My name is Hi. Miguel Lara. Uh, call me Miguel. Um, I live in Santa Tecla. And my expectation is uh, I speak English very well yeah, because my work is in, in many countries um that's all so you are traveling from one place to another that's really cool <laughs> that is cool because you get you get to know other cultures right and that's yeah. so cool so thank I, you I, so I work finance. you work in finance, finance. Yeah. oh finance. okay all right good anybody else guys who hasn't uh, participated yet anybody 
I think. Come yes. On. All right. Yes, Go ahead, please. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. Uh, my name is Milton Kanjura. Uh, people call me Milton. Right, so thank you so much, Milton. No, 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 hey, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> any I any expectation? My, my, my phone, yes. Okay, uh, I live in, in Apopa. I'm working in textile field factory. And my expectation, I hope the to improve a new course, uh, better uh, the, gram the grammar, the uh, pronunciation, and write. Uh, I need, I need uh, to try, I need uh, uh, to talk English and them is, uh, they are my expectation. Nice. Yeah, I know. Nowadays, we all need to speak the language properly, right? So I see your point. Let's see who hasn't participated. I think Briselda, right? Briselda, go ahead, please. Your time, your turn. Good evening, teacher, classmates. Um, I am Briselda. I like to be called Bris. I have 31 years old. I'm living in San Salvador. I'm glad to be here and I am hope to learn about pronunciation, um, improve and get better my English. Definitely, yes. So thank you so much for letting us know something about you, Brice. I like your nickname, Briss. Sounds really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Briss. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds cool. So yeah, we're gonna practice, and that's the intention of this course as well. Okay. So thank you so much. Is there anybody else who hasn't participated yet, guys? Are we all set? Okay. So let's get started. And let's see. Let me go ahead and share. I don't know if you already have the access to the platform. If uh if you have, you see that our first topic is, well, uh, before we start with the class, I, I wanna mention some of the expectations and some rules for these um, sessions, okay? So I'm going to ask Claudia to read the first one. Please, Claudia, only the first one. Okay, At, uh, rules and expectations, active participation. Thank you so much, Claudia. Active participation, okay, that's mandatory. Gerardo, read number two, please. Okay, number two, clarify your doubts. Great, thank you so much. Miguel Lara, please, number three. Raise your hand to participate. Nice, yes, raise your hand to participate, right? Uh, let's see, Miguel, oh, I'm sorry, Milton Canjura, number four. Okay, use reaction and chat. Yes, we're gonna be using the reactions, right? You can use and like maybe all these reactions you have on your uh, computer, in this case on Zoom, you can use them. Maybe uh, clapping, uh, saying you like any idea within the class and so on. Use the reactions, okay, you have many. And the last one, please, let's, let me see who I can ask. Uh, Briselda, Bris, I'm sorry, go ahead with number five. Give your um, microphone or mic, I don't know, yeah, when you're talking. Exactly, so that's really essential, guys. Whenever you don't, you're not participating, just make sure to like have it on mute, uh, so there's no interference, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is basically some, uh, some rules, I would say, because we need to have a, um, let's say very comfortable environment and safe environment here, okay? So let's see, our first topic for today. Well, just a reminder guys, this is uh, the calendar. I know it's in Spanish, but uh, just for you to know, we're gonna have like four weeks, right? We are starting today, which is November the 3rd until November the 30th, I think, okay? So we're gonna have 
four weeks, and this is the way we're going to be working on. Okay, I want you to please make sure to have access to your um, user and and everything on the platform so you can complete the activities like this. Okay, uh, so week number one and two. This, these are the sessions that we are supposed to be working, okay? And week number three and week number four. So week number four, we finish section five and we're gonna take the final exam, which I'm expecting for all of you to get a, you know, a perfect score, okay? So that's basically what I wanted to remind you about for this uh, course, okay? So let's see, maybe you already had an idea about this, right? And how this is gonna be working. In case you have any doubt or any questions about how this is going to be distributed, don't hesitate to ask, okay? So let's see. So let's get started because basically we only have one hour and just a little time, but we need to take advantage of it, okay? So I really hope you are ready to learn and practice as much as you can. First topic today, well, we're gonna study the passive voice. In some words, because we cannot say we're gonna be practicing a lot of pronunciation, but there are some words that we're gonna be practicing today. So first topic is passive voice. Before I get started, I would like to know, what do you know about passive voice? So we're gonna start using our chat, okay? Whatever you know about passive voice, I want you to please send it on the chat. Start typing, please. I'll give you one minute. Send me any message, any idea about passive voice. What is it? What do you know about it? <laughs> if you don't wanna like type, what? You can open your mic and talk to me, please. Teacher, I don't understand the question. Okay, um, so what is passive voice? Do you know anything about passive voice? Any idea? What have you heard about this? Any, um, maybe, well, teacher, you know, I think this is passive voice and this is the structure and this is how we use it. But I want you to tell me, okay, it's okay if you don't know anything about this. It's totally okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Alex, no problem, no problem. That's that's also okay. He says he has no idea. Teacher, okay. passive yes? voice is the principal is uh, not suited. Ah. Uh, Ah, there you go. So basically the subject is now the principal part, like the essential part, okay? I like that. So uh, Mike is saying that the subject is not the main part of the sentence, okay? What else do you guys know? Anything else? Any mm -hmm. other? No, okay. No. no, okay. Rule for all tenses, okay. It is all right, I can see. So the big question is, why do we need to know about passive voice? Is it important? Of course it is, okay. So now let's get started with this structure, guys. And the passive voice is, um, well, let's see, let me share the screen. The passive voice follows a very um, easy structure, okay? And I want to show you right now the structure of this, okay? Let me go ahead and show you the structure. This is what it is, okay? This is the passive voice. So how do I know, how do I use it? And first of all, let me ask you another question. Do you know what the past participle of the verb? Do you know what this is, the past participle? Yes or not? No? I'm going to give you an example of the past participle, okay? So let's see. Let's just give me one action. Let's see. Let me ask somebody who doesn't have the camera on. Let's see. Julio Cruz, can you give me one action, one verb that you know, your favorite one? One verb. Only one. One action. 
please. Uh, jump, for example. Cool, jump. I like it. Jump. So can you send it on the chat? Jump. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe you no like work, you like working out, you like exercising. Let me see. Okay, we have this is what I'm gonna be. I'm waiting for. Oh, jump. Very good. And then we have Ren. I just sent one message as, uh, on the chat, guys. We have jump, jump, jumped. Okay. And then we have another, we have ran, ran, and ran. We have eat, ate, and we also have eaten, right? I can see that it was already sent one, eaten. So what is the passive, the past participle? Well, the past participle is the third column. So sometimes people say that is bird number three, but it's actually, we have present, we have past, and we have past participle, which is the last bird on the, on the, on the for, for one bird, which is number one, number two, and number three, this is the past participle, okay? So if I say, if I say, let's see, teach, what is the past participle of teach? Does anybody know? What is the past participle of teach? Past participle of teach is? Teach it. Mm, very, taught. very close. Taught, very good. Taught. Some, somebody said taught, right? So it's taught, taught, taught. Exactly, so teach taught, good. What about if I say, if I say, let's see, if I say walk, I saw that word there. What is the past participle of walk? The past participle is? Walked. Walked. Exactly, walked. So basically the past participle of the verb is the very last one, okay? It's the verb number three. If we have three columns, we have present, we have past, and we have past participle. So that's the one we are going to be using, okay? So let me give you some other examples. Let's see. Uh, Carlos, Antonio, give me one verb, please. One verb, one action. Um. Read? Read, exactly. What is the past participle of read, guys? Read. The past participle is? What is it? Reading. Reading. Read. Read, yeah, somebody said read, uh, exactly. Read. So read. even though we say read, 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 exactly. So mm -hmm. the present is read, the past is read, and the past participle is read, okay? Even though the spelling is the same, but the pronunciation changes, okay? So that is really important. What else? Let's see other examples. What about the verb build, okay? So what is the past participle of build? Built. Exactly, Boris. It's built. Exactly. Thank you so much. So basically, we need to make sure we have this clear. We are going to be using the past participle of the verb, okay? So um, now let me ask some volunteers. Let's see. Uh, Nelsi, give me one example of an action of a verb in present and past and also in past participle, okay? Give me one, please. Wrong. None. Okay. I like it. What wrong. is the present of that? Uh, wrong. Uh, wrong. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I don't remember. It's okay. Wrong. Wrong. Um, wrong. I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. Right. No, I, I don't remember. That. You don't remember exactly. Okay. So basically, we need to have this. If it is run. Ran, run. It's no. very similar, that's why. Okay, so we need to make sure, guys, we have this clear. Our past participle of the verb is the third column of the verb. So now, what, what else do we need to know here? Well, as you can see on the screen, we also have was and we have where. So when do we use was? Which subjects do we uh, use was with? Which subject? Was, is with, he, she, it. Exactly. Thank you so much, Miguel. Yes. Uh, with uh, he, she, it, which is third person. And what about where? Where is used with? 
there, they, they, they we, mm -hmm. we, we, exactly. I, you. Exactly, mm -hmm. I, you. Mm -hmm. That's it, very good. So I say, I was, and then uh, she was, he was, it was. But then I have, they were. You were, we were, and so on. Exactly. So that's something that we have to have very clear. Now, what is the passive voice and how do I use it? Well, now that we have that clear, I want to give you some examples. Okay. But to begin with, I need to ask, uh, let's see, uh, Claudia, Claudia, can you do me a favor? Can you read what it says, number one? Only that part, please. Okay. The passive is used. One, when the agent, the person who does Claudia. Sorry, teacher. Sorry, it's okay. Sorry. It's okay. Go ahead, please. Okay. When the the passive is used, when the agent, the person who does and the actions is unknown, unimportant, or obvious from the context. Exactly. So when the person who does the action is unknown, unimportant, okay? We don't really want to know about who does the action. So in these scenarios in which we don't want to mention who the doer is, this is where we need the passive voice. For example, Jane was shot. Jane was shot. We don't know who shot her. Do we know? Maybe, but we don't really care. Okay, Jane was shot. Okay, sometimes we can say Jane was shot by, and then we say who did the action. Okay, so basically this is the formula. Let's take a look at the second example. This house was built in 1815, we don't know who built the house, okay? It's not important. So basically what we care is what? The action itself. We don't want to make an emphasis on the agent or the subject as somebody said at the beginning, okay? So the, what is important here is that we follow the formula, okay? And we think, so what do I want to make an emphasis on? If it is the action, well, then I have the passive voice, okay? So was shot. Why do I use was? Because it's Jane is only one person. Why do I use uh, was built? Because it's only the house and this is only it, okay? But if I have other subjects, then I might change the verb to be, okay? So following this formula like, really quick, can you think about any other example, guys? Any wh What comes to your mind as of now? What have you understood as of now? Maybe you want to open your mic and say, hey, teacher, I don't understand what you're saying. Or, hey, this is an example I just thought about. So go ahead, please. Mm -hmm. What is it, guys? Come on, open your mic. If you don't understand, it's okay. You can also say, teacher, I don't get it, but then say something. I was watching the movie. I was watching, oh, but if you say, I was watching the movie, so that, that is basically the past, continuous because I was watching the movies. That would be in Spanish. Yo estaba viendo la película, right? So that is past continuous. But then let's think about these actions in which we don't want to focus on the doer. In this case, if you, if you see, you are mentioned in who is doing the action. So, but we don't want to say that. Maybe something that I want to add at this point is that we can uh, think about the active voice. The active voice is, uh, what is the active voice? Well, the active voice is basically what we all know, like the more common one. For example, Jane was shot. What is the active voice here? What is the active voice? 
Jane was Jane. shot. Was. And what about the active voice? So look at this one. Look at this is what we care is the action. So shot. who yeah. shot? Okay, shot. We're good. So what about what is the active voice in this scenario? What comes to your mind? Jane. Yeah. Can you because, because we know the person who does the action. Okay, can you can you formulate the entire sentence, please, for this? We mm -hmm. don't know if he he drinks. Okay, we don't know. We don't know who shot her. But if we <laughs> if we if we want to well, when it says shot, it means, what does it mean shot? It means that somebody used a gun, somebody, you know, uh, killed, maybe, we don't know. But it, well, what is the active voice? Was shot? Who shot her? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. What about if we make, let's say, an inversion here, just to give you an idea. Let's think about who did the action. Maybe this was um, a gangster. We can say a gangster shot Jane. Okay. Mm -hmm. A gangster shot Jane. You see? Yes, I'm, I'm not, that is my active voice. I'm not. I'm not saying was, I'm just giving you the, the simple past sentence. Let's change, let's change the verb. What can we use in a set of shot? We can use kill, maybe. We can use kill, like when you kill somebody. I can say, for example, a gangster here in El Salvador is very popular that a gangster killed, let's say, Jane. A gangster killed Jane. So that is my active voice. That's what we all know, right? That is clear. But then if I don't want to say who killed Jane, I only say what? Jane was killed. And then I don't say who did the action, okay? But if I want to say maybe um, who did the action using the passive voice, I say, uh, a gangster, well, Jane was killed by a gangster. That would be my passive voice, okay? Maybe it's sort of confusing. Let's look, take a look at the next example. Maybe that would be clarifying a little bit more. This house was built in 1815. So what is my active voice here? What is my active voice? Yeah. We don't, what is my yeah. active? What is in my 18, active? In 18, in 18, like 15? was built this house and the date mm -hmm. okay but if i say was built i'm using the passive voice guys i'm using the passive ah, voice. Who, who who built the house mm -hmm. so let's think about who built the house then who built the house let's see let's say we have an architect here right let's let's uh, say that who, who's, who's the architect? What, what was his name? I don't remember. The, the architects in this class? Somebody. Me, me. Okay, Gerardo, Gerardo. Okay, let's say Gerardo. So take a look at this. This house was, was built in 1815. So that is yeah. the passive voice. So now let's, let's imagine that Gerardo built the house in... Uh, 1815. So the active voice is Gerardo built this house in 1815. That is the active voice. Gerardo built this house in 1815. That is the active voice and that is in the past. But then if we don't want to say who did the action, in this case, we don't want to mention Gerardo, we only say this house was built in 1815. We don't say who did it. We don't say that Gerardo did it. So the agent is unimportant, okay? So that is the difference, okay? There's, there was a hands up. Do you have any question? 
Teacher, uh -huh. if I say uh, the market was stolen, for example. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Imagine this scenario, Claudia. You are a teacher, you are in your classroom and you don't want to blame anybody. Even you might know who stole the, the, mark, the, the marker, but you don't wanna say, uh, Juanito stole the marker. You don't wanna say that. Then you say, hey class, you know what? The marker was stolen, but you don't, you don't wanna say who did the action. So that's, that's really good. That's a good example. So you use the passive voice when, when you don't want to say who did the action. You can still say it by adding by, and then you can say the name. For example, the marker was stolen by Juanito. But then Juanito is optional, okay? So that will be the passive voice. Okay? Do you have any, any example that you want to share? For example, the, the lunch is ready. You know. The lunch is ready, but then we have two things that I want to mention there, uh, Nelson. First is, is present, okay? And then we are not using is at this moment. And let me clarify this, guys. Passive voice is used in all tenses, which means present, past, and future. Past continuous, present perfect, and all that. So passive voice is used in all tenses. However, um, at this point, we're only talking about past. And then Nelsie just gave us an example with present. That's why she said is. But then we're not using is, we're using was, or where plus past parties. Mm. So therefore this example is not okay in this moment, okay? Because it's ready, it's not even, a, ready is not even a verb, it's only an adverb, okay? So Brice, Brice go ahead, Brice. He was run. He was? Run. He was run. run. Mm, okay, if I say he was run, then um, does it, Let's try to picture what we want to say, okay? He was run, then what does it mean? What do you want to say? Do you want to really give an emphasis on the action? Let me, the give, action. Let me give you an example because he was run, it doesn't make sense. I want to be very honest with you because I don't want to lie to you, okay? I don't mean to be rude. It's just that I want you to focus or think about what you want to say. That is really important. For example, let me give you an, uh, one idea that is very common. So do you know uh, who invented the, the telephone, the phone? No? Graham Bell. Graham Bell, very good. If I say Graham Bell invented the telephone in let's say 1815, okay. Listen, listen to this example once again. Graham Bell invented the telephone in 1815, okay? That's an example. Now let's think about an option in which we don't mention Graham Bell because we don't want to say who, who invented the telephone. So how do I say that, how do I use the passive voice here? Just to give an emphasis on the action, not on the doer, because we don't want to focus on the doer. The, the telephone was invented in, in 1850. I want to claw. Very good. Exactly. This That's is the ex passive voice now. Exactly. That is a passive voice. Now we are focusing on the object, basically. Okay. Now we don't really want to say who invented the telephone. We just want to say that the telephone was invented in blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then if you want if you want to say, um, well, uh, the telephone was invented in 1815, if you want to still mention the subject or the doer, you say by Graham Bell. So it's optional. The by is optional, okay? So that's basically how this works, okay?
okay? So let's continue, guys. There are many examples here that I want to go over. Let me uh, move a little bit. Fast. Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at the example. I want to ask a volunteer to read the example. Only the example, please. Volunteers? I'm sorry. Let me, I think I changed it. Okay, here we go. Uh huh. Read it, please. 16 people uh, were killed in shooting across Chicago between Friday and Monday morning. Thank you so much. So 60 people were killed. Who killed the people? We don't know. We don't really want to say it, okay? So we just wanna focus on the, the action itself, on the object, okay? So 60 people were killed. Why do I say where? Because it's 60 people. So that means that it's they. That's why I say where, okay? Let's take a look at other examples. And this is, this one, what you're seeing in here is on the video, okay? If you have a chance to watch the video, this is what you're going to see there, okay? Take a look at the first example. My house was broken into on Friday. My house was broken into on Friday. My first question is, do you know what broke in, uh, like break into mean? Do you know what it means, break into? Break into? No. Break into is the action when somebody gets to your home and you know what, to steal your stuff, okay? They break into your house. So all of a sudden your telephone, your laptop, your TV is gone. Somebody has broken into your house. So they steal your belongings. So that is uh, break into. This scenario is saying it in past participle broken into, okay? So look at this example. My house was broken into on Friday. So who broke into our house? We don't know. I can still say my house was broken into on Friday by the thieves, by the gangsters, by, you know, you can still mention the doer, okay? So I want to give you one minute because I, I think, uh, you know, I'm not gonna get with other like examples to think about one example in which you focus on the action okay like this in which we don't know who did the action okay and give me one example An example for past part mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like this, like this. This is like oh. an example. We don't know who did the action. Oh, okay. He, for example, he read the book. Okay, if I say he read the book, that is present, right? But what about mm -hmm. if I say he read the book? But if he I say let's if I say Gerardo, if I say he read the book. Uh, let's see, he read the book, that will be past. But then that one, it will be active voice because I'm saying who read the book. So what about if I don't wanna say the doer? So what do I say? He read the book. How do I transform that sentence into passive voice? Okay. How do I transfer? How do I make it uh, passive voice? Guys, how do I make it? How do I make who, like I or he read the book, how do I make it in um, passive voice? The book was read. Exactly, exactly, Miguel. The book was read, and then we don't say who read the book. The book was read by him. We can say, we can still say him, but it's not, it's not necessary, okay? There you go, there you go. Let's keep going because we only have 10 minutes. This is so little time. What about the next one? Uh, let's see, there is no doer of the action. He was killed in an earthquake. Who killed him? We don't know who killed him, okay? Look at the example number three. My dog was ran over by a car. My dog was ran over. 
ran over by a car. In this case, we are saying by because we want to still mention who did the action. But then if I say a car ran over my dog, that is active. But if I want to say, like, I don't want to say who did the action, then I want to say my dog was ran over by a car. Okay, so let me give you some more input because uh, let's see. Oh, let's practice with this with these three sentences. How do we make guys these three sentences in active voice into passive? Okay, I'm gonna give you two minutes and then share like share with me the examples on the chat. <laughs> What is doer? Doer is el que hace, el, el, el hacedor, el sujeto, el subject, el doer. El, that's a doer. So what about these sentences, guys? Only, only like a couple of minutes. I know this is grammar, I know it's grammar, but then go ahead and give me your uh, three sentences in passive voice. What we have here is the active. The food was prepared. Okay. Okay. We have the first ones. The food was prepared. Very good. The food was prepared. We don't say who prepared the food. That's exactly, that's correct. We can still say the food was prepared by mom. Okay, but it's not necessary. Yes, Claudia, go ahead. Yeah. The memo was uh, read. Mm -hmm. The memo and, was read. And the cake was eaten. The cake was eaten. Good, exactly. That's exactly, that's the way it is. So the memo was read. The cake was eaten. We are using the past participles and we are not saying the doers. We're not saying the subjects. We can still say the doers. We can say uh, the food was prepared by mom. The memo was read by all the employees. And we can finally say the cake was eaten by the boy. Okay, you see, that's exactly that. Those are the answers. Okay, and uh, let's keep practicing. Let's keep practicing. Teacher, teacher, yes, repeat, please. Repeat. Yes. Yes. Number two, repeat, please. Uh, thank you so much for stopping me. I like that. Number two. Number one. Let me send it on the chat. Number one. Um, the food. The food was prepared. That's it. We can say by mom. We can still say that. I'm gonna send it in parentheses. Uh, number one, the food was prepared. Number two, we say uh, the memo. Let me send it on the chat. The memo. Just type in. The memo was read. Okay, number two, I just sent it. The memo was read by all the employees, if you would like to. And number three, the cake was... Teachers. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. Mm -hmm. Permit, permit, teacher, permit. No problem. Take your time. I sent the answers on the okay, chat. Okay, okay. Uh, teacher, um, and was in past um, did be no exactly exactly in in because um, prepaid in verse in past no exactly past Pre participle prepared past participle 
y en este caso Pichel no había de día de ponerlo solo en, en, o no hace pasado el verbo la, el was el was no 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 it doesn't remember that uh, uh, this is continue teacher verdad Ajá. if it was present or past continuous then we can say uh, I, we can say ing but this scenario is different okay maybe maybe look at this one i know i know what you're trying to say because uh, it's not that we use the verb to be once and the verb is automatically converted into past no the construction itself is like this uh, the food was prepared like la comida fue preparada el memo fue leído el pastel fue comido so base remember that all the past participle endings are ado edo ido in spanish that's the most common one okay that's, hey, teacher, that's thank very you. Common. Mm -hmm. right so basically those are the endings in past participle okay so let me give you some other examples guys because the time is almost over and I have, we haven't gotten into the so what about this one only help me with the first one please how do we make the first one i don't want only help me with the, this one and uh only this one only number one because of time only number one how do we uh, make this can i yes please go ahead the mistake was corrected Exactly. The mistake was corrected. Exactly. We can still say by the teacher, but it's not necessary. Okay. It is up to you. It is your decision if you want to include the doer or not. Okay. So let's see. I want to uh, finish today's session with the following. Uh, let's see. I know it's little time, but then look at this one, guys. When we want to talk, we want to focus on the on the passive voice. These are the answers. We let me see. We follow this specific structure. Instead of mentioning the subject, we focus on the object. Okay, and then was, and then where, and then we use verb three, which is the past participle, and that's basically how it works. Okay, so if you stick to this formula and then you think about it, okay, so how do I say this? How do I, or what do I, what do I want to say? And then you say, okay, now I want to say it in a passive, passive form. Um, guys, maybe I was speaking all the time. I, I want to apologize for that, but then I want you to please uh, have your questions ready for tomorrow. Maybe if you have the so if you have some chance, watch the video that is on the platform and then uh, practice with the exercises and then we can talk. I have, a, I still have two minutes if you have any, any question as of now. No? Well, guys, well, uh, so thank you so much for your participation and thank you for being, you know, uh, very active on this class. See you tomorrow. Take care and well, try to practice and complete the exercise on the platform. Okay. And, and have a nice night and bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Take care, everybody. Good night. Tomorrow you Good will night, speak. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.